How's it going, everyone? You are used to seeing very highly polished videos, I think, because I start off in the shack at my workstation. Um, that's where my voiceover begins. And if I screw up, I do take two, take three, take 20, however many it takes. So I think today we're just going to do a raw video and not do any voiceover on the first half of the video. The back half will be a lot of editing, but up front, how many want to see Blooper Bob as opposed to Polish Bob? It seems to be unanimous, blooper bob it is. So before I go into the backyard of the Portamast, let me show you what some of you very rarely see because uh, maybe you haven't watched all the videos yet from HOA Ham, so you need to remedy that. All of the videos should be watched. This is my single point utility box. And this is where I have uh, my coax that either is going into the attic farm or coax that's going to my portamast, which would be, uh, this is my portamast coax. This is an extra uh, feed. And then this is a feed right now that is going to be connected to this antenna that we're gonna work on today. And it is on the red banded coax coming into the shack. So what we're going to do today is work with our portamast and we're going to do a take two on our Cha LEFS 8010. Let's talk about that for a minute. Why am I doing take two on the LEFS uh, 8010? Well, it was just last week that I posted a video and I talked about my small lot sloping L uh, antenna that is 130 feet long and putting that in my small lot. It doesn't fit. I don't have a lot that's 130 feet long. So I bent it or angled it twice to get all 130 feet into the property lines. And I just wanted to show that you could do that on a small lot. And I don't get 80 meters often here in a home that's governed by a homeowners association and a small lot. I don't get to operate 80 meters often. I wanted to show that it could be done. Now, that was with a 67 foot extension that was attached to my Cha LEFS 8010. And this is the 8010 without the 67 foot extension. This is only the 63 foot wire that's attached to the 49 to one. Some of the astute of you said, hey, you're not supposed to be able to do that. Bob, you said it was tuner free on 10, 12, 15, 17, 20, 30, 40, and 80. You're not supposed to be able to do that with 63 feet of wire. And I said, the 67 foot extension got you to 80. Everything else was on the, uh, I said that wrong, see, blooper free. The 67 foot extension got you on 80. The 63 foot wire connected to the 49 to one, that got you 10, 12, 15, 17, 20, 30, and 40. Not supposed to be able to do that. A 63 foot wire and a 49 to one, that should get you, uh, that should get you 10, 15, 20, and 40. So, was I making up? Was I lying? Because I didn't show it to you? Well, let's show it to you today. I've got the 63 foot wire only, and I'll pro provide some verification of that when we do the RSWR sweeps. I don't know what the magic is that the engineering over at Chameleon Antenna pulled off, but yes, it's tuner free, 10, 12, 15, 17, 20, 30, and 40 with the 63 foot wire only. Now, when I say tuner free, I probably used the word resonant when I did my video last week. And remember, sometimes in amateur radio, we use terms interchangeably and probably not accurately. All right, my tripods give me a fit. Give me a second here. Again, this would normally be another take, but uh, huh. what's it doing? I got it. Hang with me. <clears throat> so you wanted uh, blooper bob, you got blooper bob. So I used the word resonant when I talked about this antenna. What we really mean by resonant, you know, resonant would be one-to-one. -one. No antenna is resonant across an entire band that I know of. Even a dipole is resonant on a single frequency, even though it works on an entire band. You have a 20 meter dipole, it's resonant on a single frequency. frequency. Cut, right? We should do that all over again. So when I use the word resonant, I mean that it's workable. It's in an SWR that's workable. For me, you've heard me say before, I get under two to one, I start to not sweat it. I target 1.5 to one, but if I can't hit 1.5 to one, I'm at 1.7, 1.9, and that's the best I can do, I just roll. So for me, if I have a two to one SWR, I consider it 
resonant. Technically, of course, it's not resonant, but it's workable without a tuner. All of our uh, modern day transceivers will do that. I think most of them will work three to one without tuning. A three to one, I would typically hit my, my tune button, but instead of ramble on, let me just pull a close up here and I'm gonna show you me connecting my coax. It's the only thing that I might edit out because I have to put some of uh, the self amalgamating tape on my coax feed. Uh, I'll spare you that detail. Uh, you've seen me do that before in the channel because it's going to rain tonight. This is gonna be flying 20 feet up in the air. Actually 20, uh, 21 and a half feet about and I don't want my uh, coax feed getting wet. So I'm gonna show it today, the LEFS 8010 resonant on 1012, 15, 17, 20, 30, and 40. And we'll hit that with the SWR meter here in a couple of minutes once I get it set up and then we'll make some contacts. To make the video just a tiny bit shorter, I've done a couple things in advance. I'll show you what I did. Finish the self amalgamating tape so that my coax uh, stays uh, water free tonight. That would mess with the SWR. My coax is here ready to go. I've taken the line, I've put it through the tree over there where I showed you in last week's video. That's where my wire came through the other side of that tree. I've already tied it off to a stake. So let's get the portamast down and uh, we'll attach our matching unit. We'll get this up in the air and then I'll take you over to where the wire is going to be staked into the ground. So my friends over at Chameleon did tell me that I probably didn't need to put that flat stock on top of the portamast. They said I could have gone with a 3 8 uh, carabiner at the top uh, of this, a 3 8 shackle at the top of the portamast, um, and that would have worked fine. So I'll use that setup in a future demonstration of another antenna that I really like a lot. Let's get this down and get our antenna installed. One more thing. So those of you in an HOA, this may be of interest to you, but think through this before you do it. My coax is running up the side of my mast and my flag could get tangled up in that. Now, I'm gonna say 5% of the time my flag blows in that direction. The other 95% is blowing every other direction, but west, north and west, east, east. So wind blowing west to east. For whatever reason here in my subdivision, that's just how it is. So there's a very minimal likelihood that my flag would get tied up in this coax, and I don't want to do that to the American flag, first of all. Second of all, I don't want to draw attention to myself. Right now, the breeze of the wind is blowing that way, right? And that's predominantly what it does. So if you wanted to put this up as a permanent setup, you might want to attach your wire antenna to, I don't think you can really see it, but one, two, three, at the top of the third section up, there is a ring that's below the flag, and that's what I always fly my 30-foot wire on. So let's get this down, and let's get my antenna attached. Let's finish this up. Oh, here it is, right here. This is what I was talking about. See, it's below the flag, and this is what I attach my 30-foot wire to all the time. All right, so now to be consistent with how I flew this just a couple of days ago, make sure my wire is not tangled. And of course, we're not editing this out. This is blooper bob today. All right. Goodness gracious. There we go. That's what I want right there. Let's get this section down enough for me to get clipped on. All right, we're good. All right, we'll be over at that tree in just a minute. And yes, the portamast really does extend this easily. we go. Okay, let's go over to where the wire is. First, this is just, I just love to see this. Sun setting off in the west, 
I just love to see my portamass flying the flag and the opportunity to have an antenna on here. All right, let's go get this wire taken care of. Again, no cuts, no edits on this section of the video. Here's my wire, right? There's my wire going into the tree. It's going through the tree. If this were a permanent setup, I might try to look for something a little different than this, a better way to pull it off. And here is my mm, three foot length of rope paracord. Let me just see how much tension I have on that. All right, looks good. Let's get this in the ground. And then now we're going to go and we're going to check SWR. I'm going to do an SWR sweep from 80 to 10. And that way you can see that 80 is not good. <laughs> Just this verification that I'm not tricking you here. I really don't have that 67 foot wire. It went through that tree out into the front yard. And that'll do a second sweep 40 through 10. And hopefully we see SWR better than two to one, which is what I'm shooting for. Let's go do it. I own some stupid expensive antenna analyzers that I'm still trying to learn how to use, and then some reasonably priced. The SA-1 from Chameleon lands into the more reasonably priced analyzers. I use it in the field for quick reads of SWR, which is really an indicator metric. Then I bring it into the shack, and with this attachment to my computer, I can open up this particular app and I can plot a range of bands or a specific band. And here I am going from 80 meters through 10. And look at that. We're not resonant on 80 meters, but we're looking pretty good on the balance of the bands. You can then take this and you can save this to a bitmap image. And then what I'm going to do is take a bitmap of every one of the bands that I said this particular antenna with 63 feet of wire was resonant. And again, by that, I mean less than two to one operable. I've removed 80 meters and done another sweep 40 through 10. Here's the individual sweep at 10 meters. Next up 12, looks pretty good, that's operable. 15, 17, 20 meters, 30 meters, 40 meters. Every one of these bands is operable without a tuner. And just to verify what I said all along, here is the sweep of 80 meters by itself. This antenna is exactly what I said it was with 63 feet of wire in this 49 to 1. You can run this without a tuner. Resonant. 10 through 40. There it is. Shouldn't be able to do it but we can. We'll make some quick contacts on 15, 20, and 40 just to see how well we're being heard. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. Dave in Oregon. Bob in Florida. Seeky contest, Kilo Italy 5, Golf Tango, Rodeo contest. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. Les Arkansas. Bob, Florida. Hey, Bob, have a great weekend, buddy. 7-3. 7-3. 7-3. QRZ, State 4, QQG. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. John, South Carolina. Bob, Florida. Bob from Florida. Thanks, Bob. 73, QRZ, K4, QQG. Lately, I've been doing some FT8 contacts to demonstrate how well antennas perform because many of you only like to work digital. So let's take a look at 20, 30, and 40. I was amazed at well how 30 worked. This is the first time I've ever done anything on 30 meters. And you can see from PSK Reporter that we're also hearing as well as being heard on those three bands. I spent maybe 20 to 30 minutes on each band making contacts, calling CQ as well as responding to CQ. Regular viewers of the channel know I have three whisper transmitters hanging on the wall that allow me to not tie up a single transceiver, but these are just transmitters. They'll run nonstop as long as I want. Minutes, hours, days, weeks, months. Thanks channel Patreons for making two of these possible so that we can educate the ham community as well as test out a lot of antennas. First up is Whisper Map showing all the bands that I was working, 10, 12, 15, 17, 20, 30, and 40. 
But let's focus first on those three free bands, the ones that we shouldn't be able to achieve with this 49 to one and a 63 foot wire. Here we are on 12 meters, it's respectable, 17 meters, also respectable, 30 meters. As I said earlier on FT8, this was the first time I ever used 30 meters. I frequently put up whisper maps. I didn't have anything to correlate to, and now I do, being able to use whisper on 30 meters as well. Now for the bands that we know we should be getting on a 49 to one with a 63 foot wire. Up first is our 10 meter map, then 15, followed by 20, and then by 40. So <laughs> what do we say about the LEFS 8010? Yeah, it goes from 80 meters through 10 without a tuner, as long as you have that 67 foot wire extension. Pull that extension off and you're left with a 63 foot wire that should give you 10, 15, 20, and 40, but it gives you three extra bands, 12, 17, and 30. My only thought after using this antenna now for several days and a couple of specific videos about its performance is how in the world do I get this thing up permanently in the HOA with 130 feet on my lot? Because that's my next project. I don't know if I'm going to pull it off. I don't know if I can. My brain's been cranking on that since I saw how well this worked, tuner free. So if I'm able to pull it off, you'll be the second one to know. Thanks for watching, friend. Talk to you soon. 73.